this new moon is absolutely out of this world. And I mean that quite literally. As it is occurring, conjunct the most powerful point in space, known as the Shapley Attractor. This is a point that we have not talked about much on this channel before, as I am just becoming aware of it. And there is a reason for this. The Shapley Attractor is located at two degrees of Scorpio in the Western Tropical Zodiac chart. And this is an energy ruled by Pluto that is shrouded in that Scorpionic mystery. It is is hidden. It is a bit secretive and it is not something, even though it is the point around which all other points in space are orbiting around and drawn to, it operates largely behind the scenes. So we're going to see the significance of this energy as we dig into all of the powerful alignments present during this new moon. You want to get yourself settled, want to get nice and comfortable, grab a cup of tea, because we're really going to dig into it. We're going to start with the most powerful alignment, which is, of course, the sun and the moon conjunct at nine degrees, conjunct as they always are during a new moon, meeting at this point within the sky, this very, very powerful point within the sky. And from there, we're going to move into more of the minor aspects and all of the intricacies of what's going on here. We have a lot of really powerful galactic energies and galactic points in space that are being activated during this new moon. And it makes a lot of sense when we look at 2024 as this quantum leap year where we are quite literally taking quantum leaps through consciousness and aligning with that highest timeline for our personal ascension and for the universal and cosmic ascension because it's not just a planetary ascension the entire multiverse is ascending right now with the earth and these three-dimensional planets being really the nexus point of this energy being the densest points of space within this multiverse that energy ripples out as the earth ascends so does the rest of the multiverse it all happens in an instant simultaneously but the earth really is the key and that's why there has been so much intense focus on the planet Earth and on what is going on here as the density here is released that creates a ripple effect throughout the multiverse. If there's anybody who's new to this channel, welcome. We get really deep into these concepts and ideas. So if this is something that intrigues, intrigues you, then I invite you to join the tribe. Go ahead and subscribe right now. And of course, everybody, don't forget to like this video. We always know that this information is going to get out to exactly whom it is meant to find. So let's get into this, starting with the Shapley Attractor. Now we have four points in space that are the most energetically powerful and have the greatest gravitational pull and most cosmic energy, so to speak, that we have identified, at least at this time. The first of which is the Galactic Center, located at 27 degrees of Sagittarius in the Western Tropical Zodiac wheel or chart. And so this is the hub around which our sun rotates, right? The earth rotates around the sun, as do the planets, the known planets within our particular galaxy. And then the sun gravitate around the galactic center. Some people have considered the galactic center to be the grand central sun. The galactic center actually orbits around another black hole or another powerful point in space known as the super galactic center. We have 30 plus known galaxies orbiting around the super galactic center. The super galactic center is located at two degrees of Libra. And it's interesting to note that I wasn't aware of the super galactic center when we did that new moon solar eclipse in Libra video. But that eclipse took place conjunct the super galactic center. So that was an even bigger energy than we realized on here as we were doing that video. So the super galactic center is the center around which the known galaxies orbit. But there's more. The great attractor, which many people will be familiar with because we've talked about that quite a bit on this channel, at 14 degrees of Sagittarius, pulls into its orbit the supergalactic center and everything that orbits the supergalactic center. This is a powerful anomaly in space that is both attracting and repelling energy at the same time. It is where the laws of time and space completely dissolve 
and you essentially enter into a period and an energy of complete timelessness. So this is one of the most powerful points when we're talking about moving through timelines, when we're talking about shifting and connecting. The galactic or the great attractor rather is a powerful you universal force that aligns us with our fate and our destiny and attracts and draws into our reality the people the circumstances that are going to further our grand galactic mission on this planet and the the great attractor and the galactic center are actually quite active as is the super galactic center during this new moon the final piece underlying all of this that even the great attractor itself is pulled into the orbit of is the Shapley attractor and this is found within the Shapley star cluster which is located at two degrees of Scorpio. So this is an incredibly powerful and potent force and it's really interesting to note that some of the most influential people especially the people and the organizations that operate undercover, so to speak, that operate, operate very secretively, that have a huge influence on humanity, on the trajectory of this planet, have powerful points conjunct the Shapley attractor. And I'm talking about Bill Gates. I'm talking about some of these organizations such as the UN, such as the European Union, that were created by these these puppet masters behind the scenes, so to speak, when we really dig into it conspiratorially. And if you guys want to know more about that, uh, follow me on Rumble as we'll continue to dig into some of these things. But these, these people who are viewed sometimes, or these organizations that are viewed as the champions of humanity, but really have some hidden motives and agendas. And this energy, ultimately the Shapley attractor, the way that I see and feel it is it is this powerful point in space that holds an equal percentage of dark and light. And it really amplifies that energy within us. So the idea is to come to a balance of that, but there's almost like a choice point here, it seems like. And it seems very similar I know we were talking about, and it was Algol, the star Algol, which is also active during this new moon in Scorpio. Some of you might remember, I talked about how when we had that conjunction of Uranus and Mars on top of the star Algol back in July 15th, go ahead and look up that video if you guys want more information on that. It was really powerful. Whatever videos I put out around that time would contain that information. And I know I did little blurbs about it on TikTok and Instagram if you guys follow me there and you want to brush up on the energy of this. But we talked about how it was going to be amplifying the darkness or the light within each and every one of us as we had Uranus and Mars coming into connection with that point. So I feel the Shapley attractor very much like that. It is this energy that is very much about the subconscious. It's is people and planets and energies when we have this connection with the Shapley attractor. It's revealing something deep within the subconscious. There are very powerful deep drives hidden within the subconscious that are creating reality. And when we can become aware of these, we can become very powerful directors of our reality. It amplifies the light or the darkness within individuals and really it's, it's almost like both possibilities are there and it's like, what are you going to choose? And so we've seen with a couple of the examples that I gave, what some with this connection and there's other besides Bill Gates, there's, there's other very well-known figures who have this similar energy to them who have these powerful connections to the Shapley attractor. And I'm sure there's lots of other people as well. If you look in your own chart around two degrees of Scorpio, if you have any planets there, I know that I do. I know that there's a lot of others that do as well. It's like we have that, we have that energy within us. We have that possibility of going either direction. And so there comes a point where we get to choose and sometimes we don't realize our true intentions and motivations and like that gets revealed to us on a deeper level. And there's a real need to operate with integrity when you're within orbits 
of this energy because like we said, it's going to amplify what's within you and there is a great energy of power here. So we're very much looking at that energy of power and how it is that we use and wield our power. So this feels like a potent choice point for humanity. As we have this new moon here, this is offering in Scorpio a beautiful rebirthing process. There can be a death and a rebirth happening for each and every single one of us where we choose in this moment, regardless of what we have chosen in the past, whether we want to align with that highest timeline or that lowest timeline, whether we want to align, I know this sounds dramatic, with good or evil and which aspect of ourselves we want to focus and shine light upon, which part of ourselves we want to grow, so to speak. We talked about in terms of the ascension, some people look at it as this energy of service to self versus service to others. And this feels like a very amplified energy with the Shapley attractor as well. Which path are we choosing? And we're going to see around this time our own intentions and the truth within our hearts being revealed to us, we're also going to see this happening with people who hold a lot of power and influence in the world, such as some of the people and the institutions and the organizations that we've mentioned in this video. We're going to see the truth coming out. We're going to see their true motives revealed because ultimately that's what this energy does. Think about the eighth house, Scorpio, Pluto, that energy, the secrets are always revealed. They may be hidden for quite some time, but in the end, they are exposed. And so that is what we're going to see happening. And this process started really powerfully when we had the South Node conjunct this point in Scorpio. And this happened before the nodes shifted into where they are now. So I didn't actually look back to see exactly when this was, but I believe it was in 2022. 2022 20 into 2023 somebody drop it in the comments below when I edit the video I'll probably add it for you guys so you may be looking at the um the answer to this right now but that's when we started really releasing and revealing some of this stuff around these intentions of these people who have this who have harnessed this energy through their planetary alignments and their connection to this point in space there's a great deal of power and influence but like we said it's under the scenes it's not easily seen and recognized and so we're having a beautiful opportunity to recognize this energy within ourselves to recognize our own creational power and like we said to make that powerful choice regardless of what we have chosen in the past at this time we get to decide which path do I want to walk? The sun and the moon here conjunct the Shapley attractor are really in their own energy. They're not making any major aspects to any other planets, but we do have a sesquiquadrate, as I believe it is said, going on with Neptune here. And Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces is squaring the galactic center and will be squaring the galactic center until Neptune enters Aries at the end of March 2025 and it'll still be in a loose square in those first couple degrees of Neptune in Aries but the intensity of the square is going on right now with Neptune in these final degrees of Pisces so this is bringing forward within our awareness this galactic cosmic consciousness and for people who are less awakened it may be a little bit of an obnoxious process with neptune in this squaring energy to the galactic center when planets or points are squaring each other there's a tension here they're not really getting along they're sort of at odds with each other so this is where the more unawakened uh people within the collective may be struggling a bit it's like this cosmic consciousness, this greater consciousness wants to break through, but they're not really letting it or they're resisting it. And so where that resistance is, it can be quite painful and it can feel a little bit just like absolute madness, so to speak, where these signs and synchronicities are trying to come through. This awareness is trying to break through and they keep pushing it down or repressing it or seeing it as an enemy or something to be battled against. For those of us who are ready to embrace and have been embracing our more cosmic consciousness, this is a beautiful has aspect that we're naturally harmonizing. Although there may be truths being revealed to us and different layers and a different level of consciousness that feels uncomfortable at first as it is birthing. And I think we're going to see the beauty of that as we continue to surrender and relax more into that. As Neptune goes back to that 
that final degree of Pisces and then moves into those first couple degrees of Aries. So it's going to be the empowerment of that process. The galactic center is a point where we can tap into the Akashic field, we can tap into the quantum realms, and we can extract information solutions. And so there may be a solution to some type of quandary or some type of dilemma that we just haven't seen yet because that hasn't fully broken into our consciousness, but we can expect that to be coming through. So this is a really interesting energy here with this sesquiquadrate. It's very similar to a squaring action. So we have the sun and the moon in this, in this lighter, more gentle type of a square to Neptune in this more intense actual square to the galactic center. And so there's something, this symbolizes once again, something trying to break through our consciousness some type of spiritual awareness, awareness of our soul energy and intention, perhaps, that has wanted to be understood, that has wanted to be integrated so that we can utilize that and so that we can step into and advance to the next level of our spiritual evolution. So during this time, if we allow for this understanding to come through, for this message, this connection with our higher selves, something powerful and profound can happen. And if there are these, these other Neptunian energies here, being this is Neptune in the sign of Pisces, these energies of escapism, of addiction, of powerlessness and victimization, and you have these lower aspects of that energy, it's like we're finally being given a glimpse into the root of that so that we can transform it so we can alchemize it and become that much more empowered so before we continue i just want to recap this is a beautiful regenerative new moon we are committing ourselves to a new course or perhaps recommitting ourselves to that highest version of ourselves that we're ready to embody we are being willing to sit where it's uncomfortable to allow those emotions, that energy to move through us so that we can alchemize it. We are having an opportunity to really understand our true motivations, our true desires and intentions, and how it is that we can bring those forward most powerfully. And it truly is the energy of the snake shedding its skin or even the Ouroboros, which is the snake eating its tail. It's, it's that kind of an energy. There's these cycles, this powerful new cycle that we are being invited to step into, that we are being initiated into as we move into this new moon portal here. Now, we also have another powerful aspect going on. We have a kite formation happening. And the central points of this kite are Pluto opposite Mars, Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn, really in its final couple weeks in Capricorn before stationing firmly in Aquarius ever within our lifetime, big, big energy. This is a big completion energy around the United States' Pluto return, which occurred when Pluto hit 27 degrees of Capricorn in 2022. We are still within that energy as Pluto's only a couple degrees away from the United States is Pluto. And we're seeing a completion and then the, re the new birthing of these energies as Pluto moves into Aquarius, still within conjunction range of the United States Pluto. So we have this completion of the Capricorn energies and then this, this moving into this new timeline and energy created to the evolution of our country for those who are in the United States might find that very interesting. Now, opposing Pluto, we have Mars. And we talked about during the full moon in Aries, how we had that grand cross going on involving all of these powerhouse planets, Mars and Pluto being two of these planets, the sun and the moon and the planets that they were connected to being the other two points, forming this diamond or square in the sky. Now we have Pluto, or Mars rather, moving into exact opposition with Pluto. He was at 22 degrees of Cancer during that full moon. Now he is at 29 degrees of Cancer, where he will remain through Election Day in the United States. And during, on, during that day, on the 5th of November, Mars will move into Leo, but still be in this opposition range, still only a degree away, right? 
So still very pronounced. So we're feeling that energy. This, this full moon is really the preamble, so to speak, the foreshadowing, the foreplay, if you will, for that grand event, which really has powerful ripples throughout all the, the extension timelines, right? We've talked about that before. We're not going to get into all of that energy on this specific video, but it's big, right? And we can see this. We can see the reflection of this in the astrology. So we have that opposition becoming exact. These being the focal points of that kite energy and this opposition. And what this opposition speaks to really is the lower ego will versus the higher will of the soul. Pluto representing the higher will, that higher impetus for evolution. And Mars representing, especially in Cancer, that which we are deeply emotionally driven by, attached to, that which we desire deeply on a, on a very visceral emotional level, being that cancer represents the fourth house, the home, the bedrock of the soul and the self, our deep emotional nature. So this is really powerful. We may feel like there's a bit of a tug of war here between what we emotionally desire on a human or ego level and what our soul desires from us on a higher level. That's what is really being ultimately harmonized here is those two energetics and forces. And with this kite formation, we have some other planets which are supporting this opposition and these opposing energies within us. We have Mercury at 28 degrees of Scorpio and Neptune once again at 27 degrees of Pisces. And these aspects are both sextiling Pluto and trining Mars. And this is what creates this shape of a kite in the sky. So we have Mercury in Scorpio and Neptune in Pisces really helping to bring us to some points of agreement to help us with that Mercury energy in Scorpio. This is to really get that deeper look. And this works in perfect conjunction with the energies of the new moon, the sun and the moon conjunct the Shapley attractor, seeing our deeper motivations, drives and desires, seeing what's underneath that, being willing to really look at that to really understand that and to move beyond our superficial desires into our deeper desires to see like what is the desire beneath the desire. An example of this would be a lot of people talk about this when it comes to manifesting abundance in the material world. They talk about like it's not really money that you want. You think that the desire is for money, but it's not. What does money represent to you? What does it mean to you? To me personally, I know that money means freedom. If I have money, I have the freedom to do what I want, to go where I want, to live my life the way that I desire. For a lot of people, that's what it represents. For some people, it represents power. And that may come up. Where is it that you are using something in this example, we're talking about money. So as a source of power to make yourself feel more important, to feel more in control of your world, this Plutonic energy and this Mars energy is very much about control, especially when we're looking at Pluto in Capricorn. And so there are some energies of that. It's really looking into what makes us feel powerful and why that is and really calling us into a deeper understanding of our power, how to use that power, how to wield that power. And like we said, our desire nature, what it is that we truly desire and what it is that our soul truly desires for us. So there will be some energy. This is similar and we're still in the fallout from eclipse season, remember, of this energy of rerouting us to our most desired path. But there's the free will choice here. Okay, we have to choose it. And the choice aspect is really emphasized by this energy of the Shapley attractor because it is very much that embodiment of that energy. Which path do you choose? Do you choose good or evil? How do you want to utilize your energy? How do you want to utilize your power? So Neptune, obviously, in this connection of planets, in this aspect here, representing that higher soul energy, what it is that our higher self wants to show us, what it wants to teach us, and our ability to connect that and tap into that, and to tap into that collective consciousness as well, and understand our goals and our desires from the viewpoint of how it benefits the greater collective. Really emphasizing this energy of the betterment of the collective is Venus, 
who is located at 17 degrees of Sagittarius, just a few degrees away from the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius, and then moving towards, of course, the galactic center at 27. So there is this interplay of energies here. Venus, closer to the great attractor, sandwiched between the great attractor and the galactic center, really receiving a lot of powerful upgrades. As she sits here at this point in the sky, directly opposite Jupiter retrograde in the sign of Gemini. Well, not directly. There are a few degrees apart here. We got 17 and then we've got 20. All right, but pretty closely opposing here. Now, the great attractor is a point, we touched on it a little bit. It magnetizes when you have a planet conjunct this point or it's sitting on one of the angles of your chart or this point is aspected by a transit for you. It enhances your attractiveness. People are drawn to you. There's a mystery. There's, there's this pull. And when we have this activated collectively, this is allowing for us to be powerful attractors with Venus. This is with creativity, our creative expression, our connections, calling in those people, calling in those connections that are going to help us advance our soul mission and our soul purpose in this lifetime. This is also, I think, where I was picking up on when we had talked about some of that energy in Scorpio season of the soul fragments of retreat, soul retrieval aspects. This is that energy as well, because the great attractor is bringing all the pieces home, bringing all of the pieces together. So we're going to see things coming into falling into place as though by fate or destiny during this time. So pay attention to who's entering your life, the connections, the relationships, what creative projects you are inspired to undertake, because those are being directly influence those inspirations are coming from the cosmic intelligence itself from your higher self with these power points activated in the sky so really dig into that this is also with that jupiter energy where we're being we're able to expand upon that energy and to really it's like the I can't even put into words how expansive this energy is, especially with that connection to Jupiter retrograde here. But Jupiter retrograde has been asking us to go within, to revise, to look at things, information that we've gathered through a different angle, through a different viewpoint. So it's like that new viewpoint, that new perspective, if we allow it to, is facilitating some type of creative breakthrough, some type of new solution if we've had an issue with, in, within our relationships, if we've had an issue with our creative energy, if we felt stagnant in that sense with any of these, our desire nature, any of these things that Venus represents, there is a breakthrough available if we're willing to allow this new perspective to emerge. This is very much hanged man energy. If we are talking within the tarot. So this is huge, huge, huge as well. Going back to Mercury here, we have Mercury making a couple really interesting aspects during this new moon. We have Mercury making a sesquiquadrate to Uranus as well as a, I got to look at the chart for this stuff, you guys, as well as a trine to Neptune creating another one of these minor grand trines with Pluto and Neptune. Actually, we have that minor grand trine and Uranus is moving slightly out of orb of that. So it's more loose now between Uranus, Pluto and Neptune. But we have another minor grand trine here that is being created with Mercury. So really harmonizing these energies of Neptune and Pluto. And with that connection here, really bringing us into a heightened state of awareness and consciousness. We see these themes repeating throughout this chart, right? The fact that Mercury is in this tense aspect to Uranus, which is the higher octave of Mercury, really brings through this energy and it, it speaks to that where we're feeling that resistance again, that resistance to this higher knowledge and awareness that wants to break through. And there's a sense here especially when we're looking at within the energy of Scorpio, there is this tension and this fear of like what lies beyond that because we're very much being asked to step into the unknown, not only in some aspects and areas of our personal lives and the collective, 
right? But also within some framework within our mind, some framework of our perception, the way that we organize our reality, that is being challenged for the point of expansion right now. So the question is, are we going to allow that? With this aspect, there is quite a bit of tension or the tension here, I guess you could say, is heightened between Mercury and Uranus because we have Uranus loosely conjunct the star Algol. We alluded to this at the beginning of this video, and we did a video on this when they had that conjunction back in July, Mars, Uranus, and Algol. And so Algol is located at 26 degrees of Taurus. So Uranus is one degree away, still really feeling that. So there's this, this huge liberation energy here with Uranus and Algol. Something else interesting to note about Algol is that some consider it to be the star of wealth as well. So there's a great, for some people, this could be activating. It's like this realization, this breakthrough that is wanting to happen for you could be directly connected to your wealth and abundance, like the key that helps you to break through. With Algol, because it is known as one of the malevolent, most malevolent stars in the heavens, it is the Eye of Medusa, there is this energy here of needing to face the darkness in order to access the higher spiritual power and the light. So all over this chart, we see these initiations based on that choice. What are you choosing? Are you choosing good or evil? I know it sounds pretty intense, but it really in a lot of ways, that's what this energy is about. Are you choosing your darkness? Are you going to give into your darkness? Like not in the beautiful organic sense of the darkness, but in like the, the, the lower vibration energy of that. That's where darkness becomes evil when we truly sink into all of the lowest embodiments of that energy and become pure service to self. Are we going to do that or are we going to look at our darkness, love that darkness, but then choose to elevate that into a higher energy? And if we are willing to do that, that's part of this initiation with this new moon as we're moving through this quantum leap year. And we're seeing that really evidenced right now coming at us from a million directions and the spiritual rewards for the path chosen can be great. They can be enormous. So we're looking at this, um, when we talk about Algol, it's because it is the eye of Medusa within the head of Medusa. After she had been decapitated by Perseus, we're looking at this energy of losing one's head. So we wanna be really aware of this with Algol and Uranus active here, that energy of not losing one's head. And with Mercury and this aspect with Mercury, which represents our mind, our perception, our linear mind and the way that we organize and process information, this is all the more important. And we may see some people losing their heads around this time, especially we had talked about how this is occurring around election time in the U.S. So there is some likelihood that it will be explosive. That's why we need to stand in our light. We need to stand in our power. And really, with all of these quantum energies activated, remember that what we focus on is what we create. So it's the same as when we're doing the shadow work. We look our darkness in the face, but we don't sink into it and allow it to swallow us whole. That's what we need to do here. Observe what's going on in the outer world, but make our own individual choice of what reality we want to live in and what reality and timeline we want to see come to pass. And focus on that. Utilize this energy to inspire you. Many of us are going to be shown the ways that we can step into this next evolution of our energy. We had talked about in one of the other videos recently, I think it was a, a reading that I did, I think it was the reading where I pulled a card at the very end. It might have been the full moon video, actually, where we pulled a card at the end. And we had talked about how the next evolution of leaders, of spiritual leaders, is being initiated right now into their power. And it comes through, have, it's almost like having to prove ourselves. Can we stand in our integrity? Can we wield our power with benevolence? And are we willing to persevere, to put in the work, to speak our truth, to stand in our power? And if we're willing to do that, that is the initiation. That's how we essentially, as much as I hate to say it, pass the test, right? Because this is a school. So we are being tested, but we agreed to this, right? So 
we are going to see a lot of these spiritual leaders, those true motivations, like we said, being revealed, the truth underneath. And if they have been corrupted, that is going to become clear. And those who are of pure heart with pure intentions of service to others, we're going to be stepping into those roles over the next few years, I strongly believe. And this is the beginnings of that. This is where we really get to make those choices and decisions of what we are aligning ourselves with. And where we're really, like we said, receiving some of these final initiations and these inspirations that are really beginning to show us how it is that we are meant to best serve the collective and what type of way shower or leader for the collective that we are individually meant to be. So pay attention to what's inspiring you, what's interesting you, what's sparking your curiosity to those downloads. Take some time to get quiet and allow those downloads to filter through. Remember, they begin in the superconscious. They come through into the consciousness. Uh, the subconscious rather, and then they they blossom into the consciousness in perfect divine time. And we're seeing this process and spirits asking us to each respect our own process of blossoming and to understand that every flower blooms in its perfect time and season. There are flowers that only bloom at night. There are flowers that only bloom in the winter, in the spring, in the summer. There is, it's, we are all our own unique flowers, just as the multiverse is a flower. Some say a rose. And so we are all a beautiful petal within that, within that flower, within that rose. And each of us are flowering at our own speed. So honor your own unique scent, honor your own unique colors and petals and your own unique process of flowering and don't compare yourself to anybody else. That's those of us who are here to be the way showers. That is so important. And Pluto and Aquarius is going to emphasize this among many other things, tapping into our individuality. We are all an individual spark of source consciousness. And so allow yourself to be that beautiful individual, unique spark that you are. And if anybody's interested in finding out more about who they are on a cosmic or galactic level, go ahead and book an aura hypnosis healing session with me. We can do an astrology reading. As I'm learning more and more about galactic astrology, I am I am continually integrating that into my readings. Uh, there are so many different ways that we can go about this, tapping into these energies and your own unique soul purpose and energy in this lifetime. So just know that these downloads are going to be coming through. They are going to be crystallizing within us and it's all happening perfectly, organically. So trust that process and just surrender to the beauty of it. Let's see if there's anything else here that I wanted to talk about. Ah, uh, yes, we have, Mer so <laughs> there's one more thing about Mercury that we do want to discuss here. And that is the fact that it is in a biquintile to Chiron conjunct the asteroid Hygieia and Eris. And we've talked about this energy with Chiron and Eris, this healing of those wounds around that darkness within us that likes to see other people fail, that wants revenge, that feels left out and really wants to do something about it. And those energies and how we've been working through those energies within ourselves, wherever this lies, because we all have this energy within us somewhere. And where Eris lies in your natal chart can help you understand some of where this energy is for you, along with Black Moon Lilith, but more so more powerfully with Eris. So we have that, but Hygieia, the asteroid that represents healing, particularly physical healing, as well as healing on all levels of being, and which is a big marker for me when I look at a natal chart that shows where our organic healing abilities lie and what type of healer we are meant to be and what type of healing is most powerful for us that we can offer ourselves and also help the collective to tap into their own self-healing abilities around. So this is really beautiful with Hygieia coming into this mix here. And what this is suggesting is that there is, because quintiles and biquintiles are minor aspects, but they really connect us with our creativity, with our artistry, with gifts within us that, that are naturally expressed 
when we have transits or when we have energies activating these points for us. So with Mercury making this biquintile to Chiron, it's really showing us how we can turn our pain into gold, how it is that we can take our own healing struggles, particularly in Aries around our independence, around our courage, our will, our confidence, our ability to strike it out on our own in the world, our masculine energy and the ways that we've been working with and evolving this energy and how we can bring through those struggles with Mercury here. This is likely through communication, through some type of artistry that includes the spoken or the written word or some way of communicating this energy to others. So this is really beautiful. This also facilitates really deep, intimate conversations where we truly lay ourselves bare with another and show them our soul. So this can be really, really healing in relationships, in connections with others. And it can really show us, like we said, what healing we have to offer the world through sharing our own healing journey and sharing our own healing story. I feel like some people may be inspired to create courses or workshops around this energy or guide people through this energy. In some way, shape, or form, some people may be guided to begin writing a memoir. There's lots of different ways that this energy could work. And it's a really, really beautiful, a minor but exciting aspect that could turn out not being so minor for people who are able to capitalize on this energy as far as what they're able to do with it and how it is able to really drive them forward and their mission forward, their purpose, and their own personal healing as well. This energy is all about the ways that we can heal more deeply within ourselves and begin to really share that healing with the world. And remember, we do this in a lot of different ways. The, when we touch people in our individual lives, it is just as powerful as having a platform such as this where we're sharing this with a larger amount of people. It's the number doesn't matter. That's something that spirit really wants us to understand. We think Somebody with a million followers, for instance, if we're talking about like YouTube or something, is having more of an impact than somebody with 25 or with none who is simply uh, interacting in their own world. But it's not, it, it is a simple thing and it's, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful simplicity. It's a powerful simplicity. And that energy is just as important. You never know who you are impacting, even in your daily life. And as we have these powerful points, especially if points in your chart are being activated by this, with the great attractor, with the galactic center, with the Shapley attractor, that energy has more influence. It's like people who have power points, or this is planets or angles connected to these power points in their charts are natural activators of others. It doesn't, you don't even need to, there's, it doesn't, it's not a mental thing. It's not a conscious thing. Your energy, your words, your very beingness naturally uplifts and activates others. All right, so this is like, do not minimize the impact that you make on the world, that your healing makes on the world. Even if you think nobody is paying attention, way more people are noticing than you even realize. And also remember, that energy ripples out within the collective. Each person that heals, that's that their particular flower blossoming. And that energy reverberates through the entire multiverse. So it is so incredibly powerful. You are so incredibly powerful. Everything that you are doing is so incredibly powerful and has an impact beyond what you can conceive of at this time. Something that I found really interesting, especially where I have some PowerPoints around um, not only the Shapley Attractor, but the, the Great Attractor and the Galactic Center, is that when you have PowerPoints around these energies, a lot of times, because you're connected to that quantum realm, we're bringing through those of us, and I know a lot of people watching these channel have connections to this as well. That's why you're here. Uh, we're bringing through information and downloads that are kind of ahead of their time. And so it takes a while for the collective to catch up. They say some astrologers, some cosmic or galactic astrologers say it's like five to nine months. Some say it's up to five years. And so just understand that what you are bringing through may not be recognized or be able to be conceived of by people yet, but it will be. So if you're inspired to create a project right now and some of these galactic points are inspiring that, it may be five months, nine months, up to five years before the collective is ready for that. But when they are, it's going to 
have a powerful impact. So just remember that, just understand that. That's why the people that I speak to on this channel, a lot of them, you guys are also very tapped into this energy. That's why you are able to really grasp all the things that I'm talking about because you're on that level, right? And so we are, this is what I mean by laying the foundation for the future spiritual leaders when people are ready to kind of catch up to the energy, so to speak. And in the meantime, we're simply holding the light. We're holding the space for the this continual blossoming of ascension, of this rebirthing, really, of the multiverse that we are taking part in right now. So I love you all so much. I honor you so much. If you have related to that, that energy of feeling like you're sort of beyond your time in a sense, and people just can't fully connect to the concepts or the ideas or what you're speaking from your heart. If you're feeling disheartened by that, just know that it will all, this is why Spirit brought through that analogy of each flower blossoming in its own time. Don't be discouraged. Know and understand that people will catch up. You know, it's just like for those those on here like myself who've been what people like to label conspiracy theorists for a really long time, right? Like I've seen the evolution of that energy. 10 years, 15 years ago, when I talked to people, a lot of people weren't on board. They were very skeptical of a lot of the stuff that I said. Now at this point, it's pretty much becoming common knowledge. It's like the energy catches up eventually. So keep standing in your truth. Keep holding or staying anchored in your power. And sometimes you may be guided, you may receive downloads and you may be guided not to share them yet because the collective is not ready for them yet. So just hold on to them until you feel guided to share them. That's another way to, to sort of work with these energies. Um, or you can just do what I do and just put it all out there and know that the people that are meant to find it will, who are on that vibration and that frequency. And uh, as we continue to unite in that vibration and frequency, the rest of the collective catches up in their own perfect divine timing because they are all beautiful flowers blossoming at their own rate as well. So let's hold everybody within that energy. Hold that space for the collective as we're moving through this powerful new moon portal here. Understanding and loving them for where they're at. Understanding and honoring the sacredness of everyone's individual journeys of enlightenment. I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. Like I said, Check out in the description box below. My website's down there. You can find information on aura, hypnosis, healing, raw Reiki, entity removal, um, astrology readings, tarot readings, and other energy healings, all the different stuff that I do if you're drawn to work with me. Once again, if you have not yet subscribed, you definitely want to if you're still watching this video. And go ahead and hit that like button if you have not done so yet. I will catch you all in the next video.